and then we will have the last module the last module is on the species of of homo the different species of homo ay hindi pala no homo sapiens no? it is about homo sapiens na pala saan na yon Okay, sandali ha. Mukhang hindi lumalabas sa screen yung slides. Nakikita nyo ba yung slide ngayon? Ngayon, nakikita nyo yung slides? Yes, yes po. Sir. Okay, so lumabas na. Okay, so we will be talking about the genus Homo today. Especially Homo sapiens. No? At tama, nandito pa yung iba palang species ng Homo. No? Like Homo habilis. Okay. So we have this picture. No? The, the, the picture in the first slide. No? Which is a scene. No? A, a, a picture that I've taken in Isabela. Part of the Cagayan Valley. Okay. The Cagayan Valley is, is supposed to be the environment by which one of our early, early homo ancestors have lived. Particularly yung tinatawag na homo luzonensis, no? the one they, they named as homo luzonensis. In particular, homo luzonensis was found in the municipality of Peña Blanca in Cagayan. So for those of you who are living in, in Tugigarao or in Cagayan or in Isabela, maybe you are familiar with the municipality or town of Peña Blanca. So it was discovered along the slopes of the Sierra Madre. Within the yung, yung park ng Kalaw Cave. Okay, the, the one with the, the river. No? It is presently a tourist destination. Okay, so as you can see, the environment of the Cagayan Valley is one which is not, uh, well, totally forested no? at the time of, of uh, at the time of the early hominins in the Philippines. Okay, so it is a savanna type of environment. At least the... the the environment along the banks of the Cagayan River. The Cagayan River is the is the largest, no, is, is the longest river in the whole country. It also uh, flows through one of the one of the well, the oldest, no, not, not really the oldest, but one of the oldest areas in the Philippines, the Cagayan Valley. So we are expecting to find something here, no, relating to to ancient hominins in the Philippines. Okay, so siguro na alala nyo kung ano yung savanna type ng environment, no? hindi siya masyadong forested, no? totally forested, tapos merong open spaces like grasslands. And the trees are oftentimes located in, in clusters. Okay, so this would be uh, distributed or found throughout the, the open, open uh, grasslands. Okay, we go now to the first species. No? The, the the one we are calling Homo habilis. Homo habilis translates as handyman. 
the first ones were found in in Tanzania and Kenya. So itong mga lugar na ito as you have uh, as you can recall, no, these are part of the the African Rift Valley from the previous modules. So the age should be at around 2.4 to 1.6 million years ago. And then the last series of information here would tell what kinds of, of uh, hominin remains were found. So there was, there, there were uh, pieces of, of uh, the crania and then long bones of the upper extremities and lower extremities. So the cranium of Homo habilis looks like this. Diba? Ano yung, yung cranium natin pagdating sa, sa modern man, di ba? Globular, spherical yung, yung hugis ng cranium or yung bungo. No? Or as dun sa apes, no? yung, yung mga relatives natin na apes, pag tinignan natin sa side view, medyo elongated yung, yung likod niya. Okay? Tapos ano pa? Doon sa apes, medyo nakaharap yung or, or nakausli yung muka no? when you look at it from the side. Whereas in humans, mod, especially modern humans, there is a flat face na hindi na masyado nakausli yung, yung uh, bahagi ng bibig at saka yung, well, yung mandible, no? bibig at saka yung ilong. Hindi, hindi na nakausli. Okay, front view. Ito naman ang itsura niya. Nandun pa rin yung prominence ng bro ridge. Okay, kung matatandaan nyo, yung bro ridge is the, the, the one, the, the bony feature here. On the superior part of your orbits. Sa tao, hindi na masyado yan. No? Although some, some individuals huh? would still exhibit that kind of feature, hindi, ma, hindi, na, hindi, la, hindi naman masyadong prominent. Hindi katulad ng mga, mga ibang hominins. Okay, so compared to the Australopithecines, the face is small and lightly built. There is a continuous bony brow ridge above both orbits which are widely spaced. So later on we will go to the comparisons between Homo habilis and the other hominins. When you take a look at the jaws, no, makikita nyo pa rin yung pagka U-shape ng bahagya, no, ng ng jaws ng ng homo habilis. Whereas nung sa modern humans, diba, yung, yung jaws natin ay medyo rounded. Rounded na no? at hindi U-shape. Kung papansin ninyo, yung yung yung, yung ape like characteristics medyo narrowed down yung ano dito no yung 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 area ng skull whereas tayo medyo expanded ng konti and then this is the foot of of uh, homo habilis Okay. In many ways, it is similar to the foot of modern man. Pero meron, may sentence ito na nagsasabi na may pagkakaiba pa rin yung big toe. No? It is likely that the big toe was not held as close to the other as it was in later homo species. Okay. So nandun pa rin yung, yung, yung ape-like characteristics, no? of an opposable toe 
than a two that is uh, more aligned with the rest of the of the other digits or the rest of the toes of the foot. Okay, so tatandaan nyo yan, no? Because that is one of the characteristic feature of being a bipedal uh, hominid. And then for the cultural aspect, we have found artifacts, no? the, the, the discoverers the, or the scholars who have been studying Homo habilis have been, have, have found artifacts that are, that, that they call as part of the old one industry. Yung old one industry, it is a, it is a kind of industry where generally the core, no? So I, I think some of you here have taken your archaeology course and you know what a core tool is, di ba? So a core tool is an artifact that has been made from a core. Okay, so paano ginagawa ang core tool? You get a core. Ano ba yung core in the first place? This is a... Okay. Para maging simple, a core ay yung, yung, the core is, is a stone, is, a raw, is, is the raw material for the core tool. No? It is a stone or a pebble. Pag sinabi natin kasi na pebble, it doesn't mean that it would be a, a small sized stone. No? Pwedeng ganyang kalaki yung pebble, pwedeng ganyang kalaki yung pebble. No? At generally, pag gumagawa ka ng stone tool, you get a... A size that would be that would uh, be held easily by your hands. No, halimbawa, siguro yung ganito kasing kakalake, no, kasing laki ng tasa or malit-lit ng konti dito. So kukuha ka kayo ng ng stone or rock na ganito, no, kalake. And this is called the pebble, then, no, yung yung ganang size ng stone, no, pebble. And that is your core. No? In order to make a core tool, no? core. So you get a core, which is a pebble, and then you fashion it in order to get the function that you need. So for the purpose, for example, of chopping, you, you chip off some of the edges in order for a part of it to become sharp or to become pointed, no? sometimes pointed. Okay, so pwede na kayong uh, magkaroon ng panghiwa sa mga, halimbawa, yung mga gusto nyong maging pagkain, ganyan. Okay. So that is uh, a characteristic of, of the all the one industries. No? So you have here choppers, no? Meron din, well, yung, yung mga ibang stone tools, no? they would exhibit more complex types of uh, features and, and more uh, specialized function. Okay, but generally, ito yung, yung ating tinatawag na old one industry. Na? Simple types of stone tools. Okay, so any questions? Okay, we go now to the comparison between Homo habilis and the Australopithecus hominins. Okay, so for the Homo habilis, it has higher cranium. It has a large cranial capacity, so I, I placed there the figures. Anyway, I will also be giving this handout to you. And then there is less post-orbital constriction. Ano yung post-orbital constriction na tinatawag? Ito yung constriction or narrowing down of the, se of the section of the skull or the part of the skull behind the orbits. Okay, ito yung orbit. Yung banda dito sa likod, no? Kung saan nandyan yung temporal fossa na tinatawag natin, di ba? 
temporal fossa is a depression. So diyan nagko-constrict yung ating skull. But in the other hominins and in the apes mas constricted yan compared to the to the species of homo. Okay, so the post-orbital constriction is again another ape-like characteristic. Diba in the in 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 the other primates nga eh lusot-lusutan diba yung 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 kanilang temporal fossa at saka yung orbits. So I'm giving you clues here. And then more rounded cranium, okay, nabanggit na natin 'yan. The face is smaller relative to the cranium and it is more vertical. Okay, yung tinatawag natin na orthognatic. So these are the terms being used by physical anthropologists. When we say orthognatic, flat yung face. At prognatic, medyo nakausli yung uso. Or yung, 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 yung section ng ilong at sa kapibig. And then there is a smaller mandible. And it is more parabolic and less V-shaped or U-shaped, no? Yung nakikita natin, yung shape. There is shortened length of posterior to throw. And then the premolars and molars are smaller. The incisors are larger. Okay. So this is the... These are the characteristic transitions from, from the early hominins to the, to the homo line, to the homo... Genus. Okay, our second homo species would be Homo erectus, which translates into English as upright man. Upright man, ibig sabihin, binibigyan ng emphasis yung bipedal characteristic. So these were found in places in Asia, like in northern China, No, yung tinatawag natin na Peking Man, which have been lost no, during the 20th century. And then we also have Java Man, no, yung sikat na sikat na Java Man. No, but nowadays they have found many, many other fossils in Java. No? But during the 19th century, ito isa sa mga reasons kung bakit naging sikat ang Indonesia sa larangan ng anthropology ay dahil dun sa Java man. Okay. And then there are also other uh, remains which are supposedly which, which were uh, reportedly or supposedly found in Africa and uh, Europe. Pero Well, this has this, this have been the subject of debates until now. Okay, so the dates would fall uh, between 1.8 million years ago and 30,000 years ago. Okay, so this is a reconstruction of the head. Of Homo erectus. So as you can see, this is uh, one species of Homo that, that has, um, well, according to, to many physical anthropologists, exhibit human variability or, or biological variability. One characteristic of this, especially of, of the ones found in, in northern China, is the thick kill at the top of the skull, middle of the skull. The characteristic of ating paranthropus. And then again, you would still see the prominent Brow ridge. And then the receding chin. In Indonesia, the, the artifact or, or the remains of Homo erectus would, would be 
one where well, nandun pa rin yung yung prominence ng bro ridge niya and then the skull is widest towards the base so, so generally nandun yung ano no yung 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 characteristics no trending towards a a globular or a spherical uh, cranium Yung isang feature naman nito, no, which differentiates it from modern humans would be the angularity. No? It is more angled at this part when compared to the skull, no? as compared to the skull of modern humans. And then the eye sockets are small and rectangular. So this is the femur of Java man. Okay, ito ay ano lang ito, no? This is a, a special feature of that specimen kasi mukhang nagkaroon siya ng ng uh, lesions, no? Those those uh, abnormality in in bone caused by disease or or accidents. So it is distinctively modern with a tear-shaped shaft cross-section. No? Pag, pag hinatin yun sa cross-section, it will also look like the cross-section of a modern human femur. Okay, and so this is the the artifacts that were used by by homo erectus as you can see it is more sophisticated compared to the old one industry okay. so sa halos lahat no yung lahat ng parts ng core tinanggalan nila no they, they have fashioned it in order for for the user to efficiently hold it and then for the functional part to to halimbawa to cut no to cut to scrape or to chop the intended uh, material or food food resource when we compare homo erectus with homo habilis Homo erectus would have a thicker bone and then a long and low skull with such cranial capacity is given. And then yung binanggit nga natin no, na killing dun sa taas ng bungo. And then a large supraorbital torus. No? It has a shorter face. It has a less postorbital constriction. A receding forehead, a sharp nuchal torus set high on occipital V-shape and end is V-shape. It is uh, maximum or it has a maximum width near the base of the skull, approaching the characteristic of modern humans in a projecting nasal region. So some of the, the ape-like features no, are still there but... Uh, most no most cranial features are those of modern man so with uh, vertical or receding mandibular symphysis no which means that there is no chin uh, it has a taller stature and less sexual dimorphism no na banggit na natin kung ano yung sexual dimorphism diba and basically it has the features of a modern postcranial skeleton postcranial skeleton ibig sabihin the skeleton below the skull below the crania which is more muscle no although although more muscled and stocky than modern humans homo erectus has long legs and short arms and uh, hand bones would tell of, of uh, well, 
the same similar precision grip as like the other primates. So it is completely adapted to terrestrial bipedalism. Still with a good grip. No, yung yung paa niya, no? Medyo nawawala na yung 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 opposability, no? And then the industry to which its artifacts belong, we would term as Achulian. Okay, tulad ng nakita nyo, there is the hand axe, no? yung, yung, yung core na ginawang mas maganda na stone tool no? compared to the old one types of artifact. So archaeologists would call this the hand axe. And then we would also find uh, remains of the earliest earths. Yung pinagsigaan o no? pinaglutuan. As evidenced by charcoal, di ba? Sa archaeological evidence. Charcoal. Okay, so... These two, no, Homo habilis at saka Homo erectus, no, ito yung yung mga unang Homo species natin from uh, more recent than the other hominin species. And then the next sections we will be talking about uh, still controversial uh, Homo species, no that some archaeologists and physical anthropologists would uh, classify as another species of the genus Homo. But for others, they would uh, still be reluctant to do that. So for example, there is one set of human remains which were found in, in Georgia, no? the, the, the country in Central Asia. Well, it is in the European part of Central Asia which has close ties with Russia because well, it, it was part of the Soviet Union before. But now it is an independent country. So in that country, they have found a set of, of uh, hominin remains that some would term as Homo Georgicus. So some would, would uh, be asking if it it, uh, it was a, an early form of Homo erectus. Its artifacts is simpler than that of the Acheulean. So dito natin makikita yung, yung variability ng Homo erectus. No? The ones they found in China would slightly differ from the ones found in Java, in Indonesia. Still, some would consider as part of uh, the Homo erectus group the remains found in Georgia in Central Asia. So these are wild, widely found uh, human remains no? that exhibit variability. The date for Homo georgicus would be 1.8 million years ago. Okay, so peculiarities about human, a uh, human novel. Well, this, this, this hominin, it has smaller brains, so as evidenced by the, by the cranial capacity, and no external bony nose. Ito yung itsura ng kanilang lower extremities. No? Yung bones ng lower extremities. Parang human form na rin. No? Modern humans. Pero meron pa rin features na na-retain no? from the older hominids.
Okay. So, it is also important to mention no? uh, the theories to explain how modern humans have developed. No? Because this has been going on. No? I remember uh, as early as the 90s, no? early 90s pa, 1990s when I was in college. I was about to graduate pa in, in college at that time. No? When I found this article and uh, reported it in, a, in the class seminar in, in biology before graduating. Okay, so we have the multi-regional model which states that Homo sapiens, no? Kasi when we refer to modern man, we call it Homo sapiens sapiens, no? not just Homo sapiens. No? Many physical anthropologists would be more specific, no? So they call it Homo sapiens sapiens to refer to modern man. Yung, yung mga nabubuhay ngayon, no, tayo. So Homo sapiens sapiens which are present no, in each world region might have evolved from the Homo erectus populations already present in those regions. So for example, siguro yung mga Chinese, no, the, the, the modern Chinese would have evolved from the, from the uh, lineage of Peking Man, no, the Homo erectus present in, in China at that time. No? For Southeast Asia, no? halimbawa yung populations ng Indonesia, ganyan, and maybe those of Aboriginal Australia, siguro nag-evolve naman sila dun sa lineage ni Java man, no? which is still Homo erectus, no? classified as Homo erectus. Again, when we look at uh, Central Europe, halimbawa, ay Central Asia, no? Central Asia, Western Asia, maybe. Siguro yung mga tao doon might have evolved from Homo Georgicus naman. Which is also considered by many as, as uh, Homo erectus. No? Okay? So ganun yung multi-regional model. Ibig sabihin, merong lineage ng, well, the ancestors of Homo erectus no? have gone out of Africa punta sa iba't ibang lugar and from them do nag-evolve yung yung homo sapiens homo sapiens sa bawat lugar na yon okay so only in the old world ibig sabihin in asia in africa and in europe no? later on pa yung ano yung north and south america no? so hindi pa pasok doon medyo mahirap ipasok sa multi-regional model yung yung pagkakaroon ng Homo sapiens sapiens sa sa North and South America no? because as we all know there is no yet findings of of uh, other Homo species aside from Homo sapiens no? in North America and South America okay the next model would be the out of Africa model which states that the ancestor Homo or the ancestral Homo sapiens have come out of Africa to live in those regions that uh, wh where modern man is living today. Okay, ibig sabihin evolved na siya as Homo sapiens na lumabas sa Africa. Saka pa lang pumunta sa sa Asia and then to Australia and or to middle to the Middle East and Europe, no? And then from Asia, pumunta sa North America and then South America. Okay, so that would be your out of Africa model. Okay, for more recent species of the genus Homo, we have categories that were created by, by scholars. No? Halimbawa, meron tayong isang kategory na tinatawag nilang archaic homo sapiens. Kasi hindi nila pa masigurado na may, may mga debates pa dyan na nagaganap. 
So some would consider that uh, already Homo sapiens, an older form of that now, different from Homo sapiens sapiens or modern man, no? but still uh, classified under the taxon of Homo sapiens. Okay, but some would be more comfortable putting it into other uh, species taxon of the genus Homo, no? like. Homo antecessor. So these are the set of remains found in Spain dated to around 800,000 years ago. And ancestral to the Neanderthals and also to modern humans. And there, are, there is still another uh, taxon that they call or they have created as Homo heidelbergensis, which lived at around 600,000 to 125,000 years ago. And these are the remains found in Africa and other parts of Europe. Okay, so these are your archaic Homo sapiens. Nung 1990s, I remember, ang tawag pa lang nila dito ay archaic Homo sapiens at wala pa silang naiisip ng mga ganyan masyado. No? Yung, yung, mga, yung mga specific na taxons sa ginagawa. Hindi pa masyadong sikat yan. No? Especially this, this one in Spain. Okay, so for comparisons, ano ba yung, yung pagkakaiba ng archaic Homo sapiens? relative to the quote unquote older older uh, hominin species homo erectus so there there is a large brain brain capacity no cranial capacity okay, so nakikita natin dito no think think uh, the 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 package huh? think about the package of of a uh, modern human features, modern anatomical features of modern man. Think about that package. No? So there, there is a larger cranial capacity which translates into larger brain size. Ano pa? Yung post-orbital constriction would be decreased, no? hindi na masyadong prominent. And then there is a higher, higher and a shorter skull. The the posterior part of the skull is more rounded and it is less angular. The forehead also is more rounded and there is smaller teeth and jaws. No, compared to Homo erectus. But when you compare archaic Homo sapiens to modern man, no, Homo sapiens sapiens, ano ang pagkakaiba niya? No? For archaic Homo sapiens, mm -hmm. There is a heavier face, a larger teeth, lower and longer skulls as compared to modern humans, no? large supraorbital ridge, and it's, well, ito ay part na nung artifact, ano niya, no? artifact industries niya. No? They continued using Acheulean tools, no? just like the, the other hominins, but later on also used flake tools created from a technique called the Levaloisan technique. So what is the technique? Uh, I think I, have men I, I will be mentioning it no? in, in the later slides. Okay, so again, we have here the picture of, of uh, the Chilean type of tools. Next, the Neanderthals. No? Sikat na sikat ito. No? I, I think for most of you here, if we mention about the missing link no? or the evolution of man, we would you would uh, think immediately about the Neanderthals. 
kasi ito yung mga nakikita nila no these are the the ones that have been been found no the more modern form of the homo lineage found in Europe that time no the, okay from China the crudes are Neanderthals po I think I haven't watched this movie ba ito, Sheena? I am not fond of watching movies talaga. No? Maybe I should also be watching some of this. Okay, so sine ito. No? So, sige. Uh, kung available ito sa Netflix o kung saan man nahanapin ko ito. Para mapanood ko rin. Okay, so, so kung tinignan nyo yung skull na Neanderthal, ito ang kanyang itsura. The dates for Neanderthal hominids would be at around 430,000 to 40,000 years ago. So they are spread across the Eurasian continent, no? pero yung karamihan ay nakita sa Europe. At dahil medyo marami-rami yung nakuha nila, kaya ito yung naging sikat. No? Ito yung napag-aralan nila ng gusto. Okay, so larger brain size and earlier species. Nandun pa rin yung bro ridge. No? Pero kung titignan nyo, diba, yung, yung, yung itsura ng skull niya ay well, halos katulad na ng modern man. Yung, yung post-orbital constriction, hindi na masyado no, as compared to the earlier hominids. Bahagyang nandun pa rin yung, yung uh, elongation at yung angularity ng skull. No? Pero hindi masyadong prominent kumpara dun sa mga ibang hominids. Meron pa rin kayong nakikitang prognatism yung pagkausli nung nung face no lalong lalo na doon sa baba e comparing it to modern humans no ito yon the neanderthal hominins have long and low skull halos kapareho na sila ng cranial capacity and the maximum width is midway down the skull. Okay, the maximum width midway down the skull dito sa gitna. Whereas in modern humans, yung maximum width nandito sa medyo taas. There is an occipital band, no? tulad nung nakita nyo, yung, yung medyo, yung prominence pa rin dito sa likod ng ano, yung occipital area. A large supraorbital ridge and then more rounded orbits. No? And mid-facial prognatism. No? So many physical anthropologists would suggest that these particular features of Neanderthal hominins would be more of an adaptive uh, mechanism in, in their anatomy. So for example, the roundedness of their orbits would be there to, to protect the, the, some, some structures in the face, no? like the eyes from, from the harsh environment at that time. No? So, so at this time, the, the last glacial maximum no? is there no? or, or is about to start. But generally throughout throughout those those times huh? when the neanderthal hominins were living europe was plunged into a more cold in a in a colder environment compared to the present so especially during the last glacial maximum i think uh from the alps or from northern italy the northern half of France, 
well, the, the whole of that, no? hanggang doon sa Germanic countries, Scandinavia, the whole of the British Isles, lahat yan. No? Well, hindi na kailangan banggitin na yung Russia ay kasama din dyan. No? Lahat yan ay nasa ilalim ng ice during that time. No? And so the fringes of those those um those areas no like halimbawa the the Mediterranean countries of today ganyan no? are still cold no or or were still cold no kaya kailangan nila ng ng protection during that time no? so parts of their their anatomy might have developed something no? some protective mechanism in order to 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 select for for survival um, for for great chances of survival among these hominids okay so another for example the 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 puffiness of the maxillary region no? which houses your your sinuses diba pag meron kayong sinusitis Masakit halimbawa yung pisngi nyo. Meron kayong ubusipon and then later on sumasakit yung pisngi nyo. That, would, that is one uh, important symptom of sinusitis. No? It is because of your maxillary sinuses being clogged no? by, by, by mucus. So this would allow for air to be warmed and humidified before going to the lungs. In, in the case of the Neanderthals. Yun yung function ng ating maxillary sinuses. However, if they get clogged by, by mucus, doon tayo magkakaroon ng, ng masasakit na pisngi, which is a symptom of sinusitis, acute sinusitis. Okay, what else? More rounded zygomatic arches. Yung zygomatic arches natin, di ba? Ito yung, yung nandito sa cheeks, no? Kaya medyo nakaangat yung ating pisngi dito sa taas is because of the zygomatic arches, no? You might have uh, remembered it, no? When, when, you, when you were looking at the skull in the previous modules. So in the Neanderthal, these are more, these were more rounded. In modern humans, more squared. And then there is a broad nasal aperture, aperture among the Neanderthals. Again, the the nasal aperture, not its broadness would allow for air to be warmed before going into the external. Uh, sections of the body, especially the lungs, the alveoli. And then the retromolar space is present in the Neanderthal. This is the space behind your third molar or your, your wisdom tooth. The Neanderthals have no chins, while the modern, while modern humans have, no? And then there is a, a trend no, among the Neanderthals towards a, a more stocky build. So according to physical anthropologists, this, this would confer uh, the lessening of, uh, of body heat no, to be dissipated towards the environment, the external environment. Or to decrease the the loss of body heat towards external environment. The artifacts that have been used by the Neanderthals are termed as the Mousterian industry. So from the looks of it, nakikita nyo yung yung itsura ng mga stone tools na ginawa at ginamit ng Neanderthals. These are more sophisticated stone tools that have been made through the technique known as Levalois. Ano ginagawa yan? 
ito ay flakes no as opposed to core tools these are flake tools if you can remember your stone uh, stone industries no or stone tools in archaeology for those who have taken up archaeology or ano ba yung antro 113 yata di ba antro 113 ang archaeology natin sa UP Baguio so these are flake tools from a core kumuha sila ng kapiraso ng ng uh, material doon and then from with, with that uh, piece of material they they fashion a tool this is a flake tool yan yung nangyari doon sa technique na tinatawag natin na levalois whereas yung hand axe it is from the core itself that is why we are calling it core tool Okay, so core, yung core, fashioned it out to become a tool that would be a core tool. An example would be your all the one tools and your Acheulean. Um, the, the tools in, in, in your all the one industry and your Acheulean industry. Whereas dito naman sa level was technique, no? which is part of the Mousterian industry or Mousterian industry, no? French pala ito, no? Mousterian industry. Le Mousterian, yun yung pinanggalingan kasi, ano yung lugar na Le Mousterian. This would be flake tools, no? Most of them, no? Or, or many of them are flake tools. So you get a core, you chip off a part of that, and then that part, you fashion it into a tool, into a flake tool. No? Yung kinuha mo ay flake, when you fashion it into a tool, it would be a flake tool. Okay, so this is, this is your, your tools here, no? part of the Mousterian industry. No? May, isa pa, no? May isa pang feature ito, no? hindi lang basta-basta flake na kinuha. In your Mousterian industry, Yung core na pagkukunan ng flake should be should be made in such a way na pag yung flake ay nakuha doon, yun yung flake na ina-expect natin. Okay, so you fashion first the core into a form that would readily uh, create flakes that are that are easier to to manipulate. Okay, so meron pang ganon. When in other industries, kuha ka lang ng core and then chip off the, the part no, para maging flake and then use that, uh, fashion it out to become a tool in order, yes, to become a flake tool. Dito sa technique na ito, you have to do something first with the core, ayusin mo muna yung core and then saka mo tanggalan ng flake. And then that flake, you can use to form your 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 uh, designated uh, tool alimbaw is specific for for cutting things or for scraping for other things for other functions okay so the third would be so time check it is already 10 o'clock no we still have around uh, 20 minutes to go Anatomically modern humans naman. No? Ito yung third classification niya. Okay, so we have uh, archaic, uh, archaic uh, homo and then neanderthals, yung pangalawa. And then the third would be anatomically modern humans. So finally we are now in homo sapiens sapiens. The date assigned to to anatomically modern humans would be around 150,000 years ago no until the present kasi meron pa namang tao ngayon 3.5% of our DNA is shared with Neanderthal DNA no? so sabi nila sabi nila baka nag nag inter nagkaroon ng interbreeding no yung 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 dalawang klase ng ng homo sapiens. So, the, Neander the Neanderthals were contemporaneous with the earlier earlier anatomically modern humans. So, and in such a way, baka nagkaroon ng interbreeding among them. 
Okay, so, yun nga lang, as of present, we cannot uh, explain why why the Neanderthals disappeared. At yung, yung modern humans, sila na lang yung, yung nagpopulate ng buong mundo. Could this be due to a competition with other homo species? Halimbawa, natalo ng... ng yung homo sapiens yung 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 neanderthal hominids no? posibleng ganon no so yung portrayal kasi ng neanderthal si ba masyadong brusco ganyan no yung yung itsura niya ay mabangis ganyan and yet siguro dahil doon sa sa advantages no na kinonfer ng ng natural selection sa sa modern human sila yung nanaig kesa doon sa mga neanderthal hominids Okay so yun yung tatlong major classifications natin no when it comes to to modern homo or, or, or later hominins or later homo. Yun nga lang, merong mga sumusulpot na iba't ibang species no? ng homo pa rin. No? When we take a look at this species, we will also be uh, persuaded to classify them within the uh, the line of homo yun nga lang we cannot place them within homo sapiens no? because of their characteristic features so for example there is one which we are calling homo floresiensis which was found in the island of flores in indonesia no kaya nga floresiensis from the island of flores no one of the islands in indonesia Okay, so it has a small head. Yung bang small head niya ay due to a trend towards a, a smaller anatomy. No? Because when we take a look at, at uh, Homo floresiensis, mapapansin natin na lahat ng nakikita natin na anatomical parts niya ay maliliit. No? Maybe even its uh, stature is low no far lower compared to the average human being and yet they have survived no? yun nga lang they, they they can only be they have only been discovered in in that island no? in the island of flores and not in the other islands even in other neighboring islands yung mga tanong ng iba siguro naka survive sila because there were less predators no that would uh, take advantage of them unlike in the other islands of Indonesia no so for example in Sumatra no? mas maraming predators doon which were which uh, at one time was a part of of uh, mainland mainland southeast asia no so mga malalaking predators like tigers no even crocodiles although sa dito sa part ng Indonesia no sa Flores may crocodiles din diyan no? and also pythons no? which would be a threat no? sometimes a threat to to human survival in Indonesia we have seen we have seen uh, pythons no cases of 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 pythons eating human beings during the past few years no we are still not mentioning about crocodiles no? which are rampant no? cases of which are yung yung human attacks cases of human attacks are are happening in the philippines no? especially in palawan also in mindanao and then in many parts of Malaysia, especially in Borneo, and also in Indonesia, and also in, in New Guinea, no, in that area, eastern, eastern parts of, 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 of the Southeast Asian region. 
Okay, so meron bang tinatawag na island dwarfing? No? So in this case, there's a trend towards uh, a sm smaller anatomy because of the advantage being conferred to such uh, characteristics. Okay. At dahil wala namang predators doon, so they can evolve uh, towards that uh, trend. Okay, so ito yung mga binibigay nila na, na mga hypothesis ngayon. So we will leave homo floresiensis at that. Na? We are still awaiting studies in order to, 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 to classify it na? or, or to, to know more about it. Ganun na lang. Okay, the fifth category, no? again, this is another problematic uh, group of hominins, are the Denisovans. So first, no, you, the, the, the first set of, of uh, Denisovan remains were found in Siberia. Kaya nga sila tinawag na Denisovans ay dahil doon sa lugar na pinanggalingan nila. No? Denisova. No? So they are called Denisovans. Denisova, a, a place in southern Siberia, no? which is part of Russia. But it is within Asia. Okay, Siberia is within Asia. The dates given to these remains would be 195,000 to 122,000 years ago. And when they studied the DNA in these remains, they found out that uh, 3 to 5% of it is identical with the DNAs of the Melanesians. So when we say Melanesians, these are the people of, of New Guinea, of, of uh, Eastern Indonesia. No? Ano pa? yung Australian Aborigines natin, pwede na, na rin natin isama yung mga Agtas ng Pilipinas, yung mga Pamanwa, yung mga Dumagat. Okay? So these are the Melanesians, but uh, technically some physical anthropologists, no? or, or many physical anthropologists would like to call them as, as uh, os, os, Australoids so, or Australoids. So another set of remains were found in, in a region in the People's Republic of China known as the province of Gansu. No? But Gansu province is part of the terrain of the Tibetan Plateau. No? So hindi porket uh, Ibang province na ito, hindi na ito part ng Tibetan Plateau at Tibetan Cultural Area. Now, this is still part of Tibet, the, the province of Gansu in, in the People's Republic of China. Okay, actually, I, I think Gansu province ay hindi. No? The Dalai Lama, no? the 14th Dalai Lama was born in in Qinghai province. No? Qinghai, yes, Qinghai province, so which is next to Gansu province. Qinghai province and Gansu province is still part of the Tibetan cultural area. No? So Tibetans ang karamihan na nakatira dito. And is, is still included within the Tibetan plateau. So it is an elevated area. No? So the mandible remains here were dated to around 160,000 years ago. Okay. And then we have uh, new reports. No? This have only been published. No? This came out yesterday. Okay, May 17. No? Published by Nature Communications. Kahapon lang ito. No? The results of, of the, the, the remains found in Laos at Cobra Cave which were dated to around 164,000 to 131,000 years ago. This is a tooth 
that was studied by well by French scholars no of an individual who was around uh, three to eight years old at the time of 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 his or her death okay so this is another uh, individual from a Denisovan population no? but this time uh, found in the tropical areas no? kasi yung dalawang uh, set ng remains natin are found in colder areas no? so uh, when they were found scholars uh, suggested na baka yung mga Denisovans would be more adaptable to to colder regions lang no? like like uh, Siberia and Tibet but again we have found remains in tropical countries like Laos no? and this was published only yesterday okay. finally we have our own Homo luzonensis yes Homo luzonensis was also a hominin that was studied by the same group of French scholars, no? actually, uh, ASP in UP Diliman, the archaeological studies programs, are friends with this uh, group of scholars. I have also been invited to, to study with them in, in France. No? So they have discovered this, this uh, hominin in Peña Blanca, Gayan, in 2007. And the dates given by, by uranium series dating would be 50,000 to 67,000 years ago. And these are, are represented by the bones of the foot and then maxillary teeth and long bones no? like a femoral shaft. Okay, so until now, ito pa lang yung information na pwede natin makuha sa ating Homo luzonensis. Hindi pa natin matukoy. Well, well, dahil yung features niya ay nag a dun sa mga features ng genus Homo. And therefore, we place them under the genus Homo. No? As a species under the genus Homo. Pero hindi natin pwede pang sabihin kung siya ay archaic Homo sapiens or otherwise no? or or ibang iba pang uh, subspecies ng ng homo sapiens okay, so in the meantime scientists have uh, have placed it under the taxon of homo luzonensis okay so among the scholars that have uh, studied and published the results of this would be our colleague in the Archaeological Studies Program, Dr. Mandy Mijares. Okay. So this is the last slide. Any questions? Questions? Meron ba kayong tanong? Time check, it is 10.15. So this would be our last Synchronous meeting. So I hope you have uh, you have received enough uh, well basic no? at, at least some basic knowledge about human evolution, and I have given you at least the well, well rudimentary knowledge about physical anthropology. No? So kasi dito lang sa course na ito pwede natin isama yung yung basics tungkol sa physical anthropology. Okay, so any questions? Questions, questions. How are you do doing with your quizzes? Madali lang naman yung quizzes, di ba? So again, I will not be making exercise Bs or quizzes of modules six and seven. I will just give you the full points for it. But instead, 
I will have them as your final examination. So, uh, a very small part of module 5 and then module 6 and module 7 would be would constitute your final examination. Chat message. When po ang schedule ng final exam? Okay. The university has released a memo about deciding which dates would be our final exam. They are still asking the faculty of UP Baguio about this. So they haven't assigned dates yet. I will be informing you when. Okay, our... Yung, yung last uh, last day of class classes natin ay May 25. So we will not have any problem with that. Yung submission ng grades sometime in the middle of June. no So maybe in between first or second week of June. Maybe first week of June would be your final examination. Pero ini-schedule yan ng university and we, we cannot just assign any date or time slot no? for us to have our final examination. Okay, so, intayin natin yung, yung uh, ilalabas pa na memo ng university. Okay, any other questions? Any other questions? If none, oh, meron pa. Will the exam be open for a whole day? Ang tanong ni Sheena. Ano ang gusto nyo? Whole day ko ibubuksan nyo exam or not? Well, hindi kasi ako makapag-decide. No? Pag pwede ako mag-decide, sana gagawin kong ganun. Otherwise, we'll follow the the memo of the university. Siguro pag magiging in conflict sa ibang examinations nyo, that is the time I can assign it to to a special uh, time slot siguro. Or, or I will open it. No? I will open it across time slots. No? Pero at least yung time slot na inalat ng university ay nandoon. No? Wala po bang time limit? Merong time limit din. No? Pero I will give a time limit in such a way that you will be able to answer it uh, with enough time. Okay. How many items? Konting items lang siguro. Although mas, ad mas advantageous yung mas maraming items siguro. No? Let us see. No? I, I will inform you about it. Nandun naman sa directions. Okay, from Kirsten, hindi na po ba kasama sa final exam yung modules 1 to 4? Sige, hindi ko na isasama. Just modules 5, 6, and 7. Yung 1 to 4 are, are backgrounder. Na? In order for us to be, to have uh, some skill to, to tackle the later modules. Ano pa? Other things? Other things? Okay. So if none, thank you very much for your time no? and attention in Anthropology 104. I hope you have uh, received enough uh, knowledge about this this course huh? about this subject no? as you can see we are i i am trying my best no, to to update you no? even finding updated information no? buti na lang friend fb friend ko itong itong isang author na nag uh, ito, itong tungkol sa Denisovan so nakita ko kaagad Okay, so thank you very much and I hope you will also do your best in your other subjects and in your future semesters, especially for those of you who are not yet graduating. 
and uh, be always well. No? Palagi kayong mag-iingat. No? Hindi pa tapos ang ating pandemic. But not only infectious disease, also your mental well-being. Please take care of it. Okay. Okay, hopefully I can I can visit you Pibagyo. No? Because right now, at least meron ng improvement. No? I am here in the Philippines already. Maybe during the next sem, pwede nang bumisibisita sa UP Baguio. Okay. So mag-iingat kayo palagi. Thank you very much. Uh, you may leave your the, this session now. Thank you po, sir. Thank you, Thank you po, po, sir. Ingat din po kayo. Thank you.